All right, it's official. It's fall. Yay! Oh, I forgot about the fact that you loathe sunshine. Orhan is really, really excited for fall. I actually like fall because I feel like in my jacket collection, my fall jackets are the cutest. What I don't like about fall is that it gets dark fast. This I don't have time for. So another thing I love about the fall is fall cakes, not just for their looks, but for their flavor. So I thought I needed to remind you what fall cakes are all about. I actually love re-watching cakes. The first cake I have for you is my pumpkin spice latte. I mean, it's a super popular drink. It's not even a cult following. It's like a serious following. Like there are pumpkin spice groupies. I, I'm sure that they like line up for this drink. And I think it's the perfect flavor to bake into a cake. So I did. What is the buttercream that you use? <gasps> Coffee buttercream is my favorite buttercream. Although I would say like I've tried a pumpkin spice latte and it's just, it doesn't have enough coffee for me. But with my cake, I had like pumpkin cake, pumpkin spice cake, and then I used a coffee buttercream. Oh, I love coffee buttercream. I shaped this cake like, you know, like a tall to go coffee cup upside down. I wrapped it in a really nice pumpkin colored fondant. I created a lip around the top of the cup and then I cut out the letters pumpkin spice latte cake. And oh yeah, no, I crossed out latte and I'm gonna add cake. But before I add my letters, I, you know, I have to make everything at least metallic, if not gold. So I actually painted the cup in a really nice sort of copper tone, which tends to make me think of the fall as well. Now I need to flip the cup right side up so I can see the exposed pumpkin spice cake. I wanna make it look obviously like it's filled with coffee. So I colored some royal icing with concentrated coffee and then I piped that on the top and let it set a bit. While it's setting, I'm gonna add my letters to the front of the cup. And then I'm gonna pipe on some buttercream because this drink tends to come with like whipped cream on top. Oh my God, look at how I piped that whipped cream. I'm quitting, I'm gonna be a barista. Oh, and of course I put some spice on top. So I grated some fresh nutmeg from Grenada, uh, mixed it with cinnamon, put it on top, and then I had these little pumpkin shaped candies. The How to Cake It Pumpkin Spice Latte comes with pumpkin shaped candies. What would you do differently? Oh, don't ask me that question. That's like a rabbit hole for me. I might have made it like an actual Starbucks cup, but maybe I could have done like a special holiday version cup from Starbucks. I think that's what I would do differently. If you guys want to see that, leave a comment below. Maybe there's like another Starbucks drink that you guys want to see. Yeah, I mean, and they have tons of drinks, so let me know. Moving on. Oh my gosh, I love this. It's candle cakes. So fall. I remember thinking like this would be boring because sometimes when you think of a candle, you just think of like the white standard candle. You buy a six pack at Ikea and you light it. So I went for sort of vintage Gothic candles. I actually mimicked these candles that I own and I was really, really happy. And essentially this is a good cake to start with if you've never made a novelty cake because the cakes themselves are just cylinders. So they're just round cakes, but taller. It's halfway between, you know, a buttercream cake and then like a novelty cake, but there's not a lot of sculpting. I want each candle to have a different flavor profile, kind of the way candles have different scents. So I've baked a chocolate cake, a pumpkin spice cake, and then a just a vanilla cake that I folded a cinnamon sugar mixture into. I'm filling my chocolate cake with a cranberry clove buttercream. I'm gonna fill the pumpkin spice cake with a candy ginger buttercream. And then I'm gonna fill the vanilla spice cake with an apple spice buttercream. It's like, these cakes were so Bath and Body Works. You know what I mean? But like, Bath and Body Works in the, in the gothic years. <laughs> I definitely wanted these candle cakes to light. I feel like it's a simple effect, but it needs it. So what I did is before adding the top layer of cake to each cake, I used a circle cutter and I cut a circle out of the center of each one of the top layers, making sure that circle was large enough to hold a tea light. I should have just caked tea lights. Imagine. <laughs> <Sign again. laughs> 
The tea light definitely will melt the buttercream, but what I'm hoping is that it's far enough away that it will start to melt it subtly, because if you think about it, when you light a candle, the candle starts to melt in the center near the flame before it goes all the way out. So I'm actually okay with the thought of melting, because I think that will make it look even more realistic. All of my cakes are filled and stacked, so there's a not-so-secret chamber cut out of each one. They've been crumb-coated. I'm going to ice them, and I'm gonna intensify the color of my buttercreams to ice these cakes. I wanna ice the chocolate candle in a nice burgundy-colored buttercream, the pumpkin candle in a pumpkin-colored buttercream, and then the apple spice candle in, well, a beige buttercream. Normally I don't go for beige, but I feel like in the candle world, beige, you know, reigns. Don't you agree? These are adult fall renaissance candles. <laughs> <laughs> it was just called bath and body work back then. There wasn't more than one. <laughs> they weren't in malls, you know? <laughs> So I'm gonna ice each one of my cakes in the corresponding buttercream. I'm gonna ice it as smooth as I can with a bench scraper and smooth it out on top as best I can. I actually have candles that look like this, so I use them as my model. And basically they have almost like a border around the candle. I wanted to recreate this embossed candle look on my candle cake. So I rolled out some fondant and then I used basically an embosser that I have to emboss three different patterns on the fondant. I cut it out very carefully with the tip of a knife. And before applying it to my cakes, I want to of course paint them. I'm gonna use the colors gold, old gold and copper. It's really a shame that I didn't have a third gold but copper, like I said, with the pumpkin spice latte, it's very, very full. So I'm painting these embossed bits of fondant and then I'm gonna carefully pick them up and wrap them around each candle cake. The best part about these cakes are, you know when you smell a candle that smells so good you wish you could eat it? You don't have to wish with these candle cakes. You can eat it. Before we cut it though, you gotta put your little tea light inside. I used a tea light that had like a plastic casing, but the aluminum casing would be fine too. And now you can light your candle cakes. And you know what's amazing? They smelt even better after I lit them. Because the warmth like brought out all the smells. Yes. Yeah. I actually wouldn't change anything about these cakes. And I think the reason is when I go into a cake and I think to myself, oh, this is gonna be boring. How do I make it better? In this case, these cakes came out better than I even imagined them. When I would change something is when I look back or I something frustrating happens or I hit a roadblock. That's when I'm like, oh, I should have done this, this or that. Oh my God, that's such a great segue to the next cake. Oh no, what is it? Tell me it's not an apple pie. Is it, a, is it McDonald's apple pie? No. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, it's the salted caramel mocha cake. This always, this makes me think of us going to Starbucks, me, you and Cody, to try the drinks. And yeah. I was like, they're just way too sweet. It's like a hot milkshake. It's a hot milkshake. Call it what it is. Don't call it coffee but I thought that the flavors of the salted caramel mocha would be so awesome in a mega cake. So there's chocolate ganache, coffee buttercream, Italian meringue buttercream that I made into coffee buttercream. And then on the inside, cause the drink has like a nuttiness to it. So I did toasted hazelnuts, score bits, caramel, and coarse salt in the layers. So I did my bullseye method with coffee buttercream and chocolate Swiss meringue buttercream. I mix the chocolate and the coffee together because it's mocha. Oh, this cake was delicious. The best times at how to cake it for me is when I get a cake and I'm editing that cake in the same week. Yes, I mean, that's so like, true oh, cake That was delicious, mm, let me try. And just like <laughs> <laughs> that is true cake -ception. Yeah. Because you watch it and you edit it and you eat it while you're editing. 
which gives you more insight to the cake. We gotta make this a, a rule. You just gotta make your demands, Orhan. Right? Yeah, you yeah. gotta say, I'm not editing a cake unless I'm eating that cake. Jocelyn's not gonna forgive me for telling you to do this. Take this part out of the video, but make your demands. I'm gonna answer your question before you ask me. If there was one thing I could change, I wouldn't have tried to make it that tall. I should have known better, um, but I, my thought was like, you know how Starbucks drinks are like ridiculously large? <laughs> so my thought was like, I'm gonna make this over the top tall cake. I had to shove sprinkles up against it. So it feel no, because it was falling over. Uh -huh. The buttercream is nice and hard though now. So I think I can flip it. I'm gonna do some cake surgery. I crumb coated the whole thing with chocolate buttercream. Chilled it and I iced it again with my chocolate Swiss meringue buttercream. Unlike the pumpkin spice latte cake where I physically shaped it like a drink, this is still gonna be shaped like a cake, but I still wanna mimic, you know, the look of a Starbucks drink. So I dolloped on a bunch of buttercream to look like whipped cream. Cause you know, they pipe that whipped cream on, but the drink is hot. So you take two steps and like, it's like starting to melt. So that's the look I'm going for. And then on top of that whipped cream, just like the drink, I drizzled some more salted caramel Score bits, salt, salted caramel drizzled. Oh, and then I put like really, really coarse uh, raw sugar down at the bottom. Oh, oh, and I put salted caramel macaron around the bottom. And then I made, um, you know, that signature green straw that Starbucks has. I just wrapped fondant around a dowel and inserted that into the cake. This cake was delicious. Guys, if you wanna learn how to make fall themed treats, we have a lot of new Bake You Happy live tutorials. You can learn baking techniques from me or one of our incredible dessert artists in a live baking class. We have tutorials on handmade donuts, buttercream flowers, cookie decorating, and a lot more. Head to the link in the description below. The next cake is a pumpkin spice cake in the shape of a pumpkin. Woo! Just really pushing the boundaries, you know? <laughs> really thinking outside of the box. And so I built up this cake, like a smaller round on the bottom, wider in the middle, and then a bit smaller on top. I even used all my humps and added to the cake on top. And then I just sort of shaped a pumpkin, sort of rounding out the whole cake would be, a pumpkin cake is another great starter cake because pumpkins, let's face it, they come in every shape, every size. Pumpkins are not perfect. Like normally wherever they've been lying, they flatten on the earth. They're all shapes and sizes. And so this is a great cake to start with because you can't really go wrong. As long as you don't make it square, you're good. <laughs> Yeah, or like a triangle. Yeah, don't make a triangle. It shouldn't have sharp edges of any kind. After you carve your cake into a pumpkin, the next thing you'll want to do is crumb coat it, ice it, and then cover it in a beautiful pumpkin colored shade of fondant. So you just want to drape it over, smooth it, tuck the excess underneath and trim away any of the extra excess, uh, tuck it down into the top where you're gonna build your stem, and then we can start to texture the pumpkin. So I'm using my sculpting tools to make indents along the pumpkin. Again, these indents are not evenly spaced. You just gotta make sure that they run up and down, and you wanna drag that tool very carefully so you don't actually cut or poke through the fondant. You're just leaving an indent. The stem I made out of gum paste. The reason is gum paste is much more solid than fondant and dries harder and dries faster. So you can start to sculpt it and pretty much it will start to dry as you're sculpting. You need to work faster with it, but it's more guaranteed to stand up than fondant. So I made the stem out of a light colored green gum paste. I rolled it into like a big tube and then I used the same sculpting tools that I used on the pumpkin to put several lines because the, the stem looks kind of like of tree bark, if you know what I mean. Like it looks rough and it's textured. So you wanna recreate that look. And on top, I used just some piping tips, like the grass piping tip to sort of stipple the top and make it look rough. And you also wanna make sure that it's wider at the base 
and just fix the shape and make sure it looks like it's the right size for the size of pumpkin that you have made. At this point, you'll wanna paint it because the stem is actually quite dark. It's quite a dark green. So for this, I use some green food coloring. If you don't have a dark green, you can mix black into it. And then I used either yellow or white color dust over it. And to make it look as rough as it looks in real life, you can also use the blade of your knife and sort of purposely scrape it. Or a to oh, I used a clean toothbrush. I forgot about that technique. A pumpkin stem looks really sort of rough and you wanna mimic that. And you just wanna make sure to leave the top of the stem a much lighter color than the sides because that's where it's sort of been chopped off. It's not as if you drop a pumpkin and it has a bruise like an apple. It's more like it gets scratched and scraped. So you can use your knife to purposely scratch and scrape it. And then I accented those scratches and scrapes by painting it with spices. So I use like ground cinnamon. I painted that onto the surface because often they're on the ground and some of the dirt sticks to them as well. And that's a pumpkin. Oh my gosh, this pecan pie. Okay, so let me tell you, I never liked pecan pie my whole life. Then I worked in a bakery and the guy that was training me like had me try it and I changed my mind instantly. I don't know what happened to me that day. I love pecan pie. And you know what else I love? Baking two pecan pies and putting them in a cake. And I made them really deep too. So they were like deep dish pecan pies. And then of course, caramel. You can also melt ganache and put that on top of a pecan pie, but I vote caramel over chocolate. And what I did is I built the cake with chocolate cake and chocolate ganache so that I could have it all. Chocolate, caramel, and pecans. I also wanted to decorate the top of this cake with caramel apples. So I just caramelized sugar in a pot and then when it was ready, I chilled it a bit so it'd get thicker and I dipped like, you know those mini apples? That is so fall. And then what else did I do to them? What am I making right now? Give me a minute. I don't know what I'm making. Oh, I love this. I'm making my spiced pecans. So it's like butter, spices, and then you cook the pecans and sugar, brown sugar, and then you bake them. They're good on their own. Like you would just eat a bowl of those, but on a cake, they're delicious. Because this was a fall Thanksgiving mega cake, I wanted to use everything that reminded me of the fall. Pecan pie, mini apples that were dipped in caramel, spice nuts, you name it, I was putting it in this cake. Even if you made this cake at half the size, like just one pecan pie, it would still be over the top decadent. Like this would be the thing that you eat at Thanksgiving after the meal that like puts you in a coma. You know what I mean? Like, the <laughs> and then you wake up and it's Christmas. It's amazing. It's really, really good. <laughs> I don't, also don't think I would change anything about this cake. What can you change like, about this cake? If I said yes to that question, I I'm mean. I'm not gonna ask you. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna be making more fall themed cakes in the coming weeks, so don't forget to subscribe if you wanna see them, but if you need more cake right now, click here.